what do you guys remember about inequalities? Exactly. I don't even know why we waited to record until the. What does that symbol mean? It's less than. It kind of looks like an L, doesn't it? That's how I write my L's. I write them like this and not this. Who writes their L's like that? <laughs> Kill me. Or what if I have this symbol? What does that mean? Less than or equal to. Less than or you get the option of being equal to. If I have this symbol, now answer. That's greater than, and of course if I have this, greater than, whoops, greater than or equal to, I guess I'm being kind of sloppy today, oh well. Now, this is what I want you to know, okay, I want you to solve inequalities, I want you to solve inequalities just like equations. That means what you do to one side of the, of the inequality, guess what? You do to the other side of inequality, right? Isn't that what we do with equations? If you add 6 on one side, you add 6 on the other side. You divide by 2 on one side, you divide by 2 on the other side, right? I thought you knew how to solve equations, now you're messing with me. What have I been doing this whole time? There is a condition here, though. Here's the condition. It says that if you multiply or divide, multiply or divide both sides by a negative. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol changes direction. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, the inequality symbol changes direction. So we're going to see how that comes into play here in just a moment. But first, I want us to see what does it mean to be an inequality? What does an inequality look like? Okay. Uh, if I talk about this guy, x is greater than 6. Okay. If I want to find solutions, that means the same definition applies that we had before for a solution. It's a replacement of x that makes the statement true. So what's a replacement of x that make it this guy true? Anything bigger than 6. Anything bigger than 6, like 7, 6.1, 6 6.0000000003, right? 1 million. So how many answers are there for this inequality? An infinite number of ants, an infinite number of solutions. So since I can't write all of those, I'm going to show you two ways we have for expressing that. One of the first things that we have is called a number line. So it's our graph. The only number I care about on this guy right now is six. A lot of people put zero, but I don't care. Now this is the way that I do my graphing. I'm going to put an open circle at six, and I'm going to shade on the number line where my solutions are. So this says x, my solutions are greater than 6, so which way do I go? To the right. I go out to the right. Do you all agree? Now, we understand that as we go out to the right, we talk about infinity. Now remember that infinity is a symbol, and it's used to represent the unboundedness of real numbers. When I say unboundedness, that means there's no bound, there's no limit, there's no endpoint. So these numbers can increase without stopping. Do you all agree? Now, I use infinity going out to the right. Out to the left, the convention we use is negative infinity. Meaning you get super, super big numbers with a negative sign in front of them. That's all that means. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is so we can talk about something called interval notation. And again, there's a whole video about interval notation on my YouTube channel. Interval notation takes what you see on the interval, and it will express it from left to right. So from left, 
I'm coming from 6, and I go out to infinity on the right. And I'll use parentheses around these. So what that means is that with the proper context, somebody can look at this and say, you're talking about a section of numbers on the number line from 6 to infinity. When I see the parentheses, that tells me you're not including 6. And if we see the graph, we see that as well because I have an open circle here. Now I want you to compare this inequality to this one. If I were to say x is greater than or equal to 10. Now what's the difference between these two other than the 6 and the 10? It's equal to and has a closed circle. This is equal to, and we will use a closed circle. So here's 10. I'm going to use a closed circle. Now why is it closed? because I get to be equal to. That means I get to include that. So this is a closed circle, which means my interval notation, I'll have a bracket on this guy. Now this is greater than, so it's going out to the right. I'm going from 10 to infinity. Am I including the 10? Yeah. To denote that, I'll use a bracket. But I still have to use parentheses on infinity because can you get to infinity and stop and just sit down and talk with it? No. Well, if you don't put a parenthesis at the, at the end of it, I mean, what, what does that mean? It, it's incomplete. They're using the proper notation, bracket 10, infinity, close parentheses. So it's basically saying you cannot go left, but you can keep progressing right. My solution set, my solution set is everything that's greater than or equal to 10. And so I represent it with the graph, the interval notation. And the interval notation tells the reader that the furthest left you are in terms of the order of real numbers is 10, including 10, but then it goes to the right forever. <coughs>